Hello, today I want to talk to you about mental health and autism, dyslexia and ADHD, special needs in general and the state of our education system. My name is Sarah Jane Critchley, I'm the author of A Different Joy, The Parent's Guide to Living Better with Autism, Dyslexia, ADHD and more. Now I want to start off with a story today. Many, 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 many years ago, um, when man started to mine coal in the UK, what they had was what was called an open cast mine. So what they would do is they'd take picks, axe, shovels, sharp things, and they would actually cut into the side of the hillside and they would scoop out coal and set fire to it, use it for heat and building melting um, metals and things like that. As coal mining got more sophisticated and as the mines got deeper and deeper and they became pits instead of open mines, one of the biggest issues that they faced inside the mine was the build-up of poisonous gases and lots of miners died and as, because these gases were, you couldn't tell they were there, they were invisible, you couldn't smell them, there was no way of detecting them. So eventually what some very enterprising miners did is they took birds down in a cage, they took a canary in a cage, like the one in this picture here, and they took it down the mine with them. And what happened is that because the canary was smaller and had smaller lungs, when it was exposed to the poisonous gases that the miners couldn't see, the canary would die. And then the miners instantly, seeing the canary, looking really sorry for itself, sorry, excuse me, um, would suddenly think, oh, heck, there's something seriously going wrong here, and they'd hightail it out of the mine. When they did that, they survived. And that worked really well until the invention of the Davy lamp by Humphrey Davy. Anyway, you probably didn't need to know that bit, but I feel that our children with special needs, and especially those who are autistic, are like canaries in the mines. What we have is a build-up of toxic combination of gases and of influences and policies and vulnerabilities that are adding up to a system that is causing them to become ill, to be sick, and unfortunately in some cases, take their own lives. Now that's an incredibly complex situation to unpack um, and we don't have all of the answers. But I do think, actually, that one of the things that makes our young people far more vulnerable is being told time and time again that they're not good enough, that they can't do anything, that they're broken, that they're defective, that there's something wrong with them. And that actually what we need to do is start thinking about their skills and their strengths and talking about their differences as, rather than their deficits. So one of the things that I've come up with as a way of working through that is a four-part plan to build up the self-esteem of your young people. Because if they're feeling more secure in themselves, more confident in themselves, they believe in themselves more, they will be less vulnerable to the other influences, some of which are highly toxic in my opinion, um, which are around them. And we want them to be less vulnerable, don't we? So let's work our way through and see what we can do. There are just four ideas here. The first one is stop trying to fix me. If you, you imply that if you're trying to fix something all the time, they're broken. The biggest breakthrough I had in helping my daughter was in realizing she wasn't broken. I didn't need to fix her. I needed to change the way that we reacted to what she was doing. I needed to change the supporter that was around her. So the things that that relies on is having respect for the individual, of allowing themselves to say what they want and listening to what they tell you, whether it's in words or in behaviour. It relies on sharing their interests, in valuing their time, in valuing being with them. You'd be amazed what I've learned about all sorts of things because of sharing time on YouTube with my boy. And it's been lovely, it's been delight. It's because I respect his choices and his interests. The second thing, listen to what I want. This is so important. We need to build the ability of our young people to make choices. If we're restricting their options and stopping them from trying things, then they won't be able to choose. If they can't choose, 
they can't choose a life for themselves that they would want to live. We are then imposing on them something that they may not want, that may not support their needs and support them as an individual. We need to make sure that that's person-centred and it's around what they want and need and desire and that reinforces their sense of self and value and worth. The third element is around using a communication style that works for that individual. You must have communication that works both ways, otherwise you're onto a non-starter. The third thing is around celebrating success. One of the delights is to see someone's face really come alive when you can see that they've achieved something they wanted to do and it doesn't have to be anything big. It can just be being out somewhere they love to be or achieving a tiny, tiny bit. It may be a big thing for somebody else or it may be a tiny thing for somebody else but it could be a really big thing for them. Um, the next thing is showing tangible proof. Lots of our young people will not believe what you tell them, especially if you're their mother, because you're biased. I know, mine don't always believe everything I say, because they say, you have to say that, you're my mum. Well, actually, I don't have to say that, and I don't say it when it's not necessary. But proof from a third party, from somebody else, somebody else's certificate, somebody else's evidence, word from a teacher, all of these are incredibly valuable in reinforcing self-esteem and the value that an individual has. And I, one of the ways I love to do that is to keep a glory file. So we have folders where we share lots of good practice, lots of um, things that have gone right, swimming certificates, um, thank yous from people, anything like that. The final thing is to give them space. People are autistic, people need time and space and peace. So they need to actively manage what you can do in a day and not to overload them with other people's priorities. Give them space to absorb, space to grow and react and respond and recover from the demands of being social that are imposed. We need to allow chill out time, time with special interests and things that they love. So, just four ideas, four nice and simple things, really easy to do. None of them will take a huge amount of time. If you could do just one thing in each of those, what would there be tomorrow? Tell me down below. I'd love to know what you think. Please tell me what you know. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Let's make a real difference in the mental health of our young people, starting today. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.